I want to ask you about the 2010 gold medal hockey game. I'm told there's a story there. It involves you and an arena somewhere in Texas, I believe. Some bull arena in Texas. What's the story there, Adam? So I, I want to, it wasn't Laredo. Um, might have been Abilene, Texas. So okay. not one of our bigger towns. And uh, Chris Jericho and I wanted to watch the, uh, the gold medal game. And we were on last. It was uh, myself and John Morrison against Jericho and CM Punk. Jericho was world champ at the time. Him and I were in our feud building up to WrestleMania 26. So we go out on one of the, the, the crew guys' buses to watch the feed. And uh, we told, you know, uh, Punk and Morrison were like, okay, we're going to go and watch the game. Everything good? Cool. All right. Go up. We watch the game. Now, literally, Sid scores and our music hits. It, it's like <laughs> that close. So now wow. Jericho and I are on cloud nine for this match opposite each other. And we're supposed to be like hated rivals, but inside we're like, yes, like we did it. Cause of course we did it. Um, <laughs> as all of Canada said, we did it. But uh, so we were just ecstatic, right? And uh, then we get to the back and Punk's like, he wouldn't tag Jericho during the match because he was mad that we went and watched the hockey game. <laughs> so now when I see him tweeting about the Blackhawks all the time, I'm like, well, where was this hockey fandom when we were watching the Olympic gold medal game? So, yeah. Was, 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 was that game ever in doubt in your mind? I mean, no, because it, it can't be. We're supposed to win the gold. That's just the way it works, right? I mean, that, that's what we think every year. It doesn't always happen that way, but I think it's probably like the, uh, when the Americans play basketball, they're not going to lose. You know, they're just, that's not the way this works. Um, I, I think that's kind of where we were at, but I still like almost shot through the roof of that bus when he scored. <laughs> Here's my question, though. If the overtime had continued... Would you have gone out and wrestled or would you have demanded somebody cut a promo? Yeah, yeah well, here's what probably would have happened. We're like, okay, all right, um, 10 minutes will do, right? Because yeah, Abilene's not going to care. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, we, we, we would have we would have, we would have okay. done what we always do, but I would have been running straight back, still in full gear to see if that game was on, and I would have been in tears if it weren't. <laughs> let me let me let me take it to another level because I remember um, Lance Evers, Lance Storm, telling me once, "I'm not a professional wrestler. I'm a professional traveler, because that's what we do. We live in airports and we live on planes and rental cars. I'm a <laughs> so professional traveler. So in that in that spirit, if you're waiting to get on a flight and the game goes into overtime and you're supposed to board to get to Raw the next day." Do you get on the flight? I check to see if there's backups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I check to see if there's later flights and, and, and go, right. Is it possible to switch to that flight mm -hmm. and still maintain my first class seat? Cause I don't want to sit in coach cause mm -hmm. then I'll get a middle seat. And now I've missed the game and sat in the middle seat, you know? So it, it's, uh, mm. If there's backup, I'm staying. <laughs> but if there's not, are you on the flight? I think I got to. Oh, wait, wait, Ra's the next day? Yeah. Ah, oh, then I take a morning flight. Okay, it's uh, it's so cl it's so close that there are no other flights and you're making a decision. It's overtime or Raw. Come on, Canadian. Come on, Orangeville. He just answered the question. He's going to Raw <laughs> as much as it hurts. Yeah, I got to do Raw. I, gotta, I, I have to because that's, you know, I got to. That's just the way I'm wired, but a part of my soul will die. <laughs> That's a great answer. Free. Hopefully not an important part. No, it's just a little part down here. For those of people who can, who will watch this on YouTube, um, you've got some interesting stuff behind you. As Jeff mentioned, there's a Mike Palmatier mask. There's also a goal stick. 
Is there a significance to the goal stick over your shoulder? That is a game played Marty Brodeur. And um, I love Marty. I just, I love the way he played. I love the the Devils as well. Um, that started with Chico Resch. Uh, it started with their jerseys. So I, I, I love Marty. So I got Marty all up there. Oh, and the masks. Yeah. That, wow. That's all Marty. That's that's Team Canada. That's St. Louis. That's Jersey. Then I got uh, Cujo. I got Eddie and uh, Felix. Um, and then I got uh, Bunny LaRock, Wayne Thomas. Wow. Oh, good. And um, so, I, you know, and I also have this little bad boy, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no way! Where, a hey, Toronto you... Maple Leafs WWE belt. Hang, hang on, is hang on a second. I want to I want to see the plate. Uh, the second plate to the left. Yeah, does that see Toronto Arenas? Oh, that's a great touch. Uh, arenas and wait. What's the, okay? What's the story behind the on oh, the St. Pat's? Oh, that's great. Okay, what's the story there, Adam? So, um, well, being a wrestler, where this is kind of what everything is based around. Uh, and I saw this um on Instagram you know, this toy company. And I reached out, I was like, Hey, what is that? And how do I not have one? So, <laughs> so next thing I know, uh, I have one and, and it takes a, a, a nice spot. Uh, actually it takes a nice spot right beside Wendell painted on a tabletop hockey game. That's so cool. Wow. Like you're like, leg le like legit, super leaf fan i was saying to you off air like i love the fact that as a wrestling fan i was called a mark for so many years and now in hockey i can call you a hockey mark you absolutely like, can. I, I love i love this adam like this is fan so when did this start for you i mean the hockey fandom and who are your and who are your first guys so i, I mean it really started as early as i hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on before we do that i have to ask this question okay so Royal Rumble, you you just won the you just won your big match, the Royal yeah. Rumble this week. If somebody said to you, watch this interview, and said to you, Edge, I want to challenge you for your Maple Leaf belt, would you put it up in the ring? Well, yeah, but they'd stand no chance. If that's on the line, I annihilate them. <laughs> I'm not losing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> So who are your guys? Who are your who are your guys when you grew up? Because I see Paul Mateer over your shoulder, and that was Paul Mateer and Salming were my guys. So that that is the era, the, the Harold Ballard years, really. Um, yeah. And and that's because that was when my entire family would would sit around the TV and and we'd watch hockey. So I remember sitting on my grandpa's foot, and he'd do like a horse ride, and and we I'd be watching hockey, and I'd be watching Paul Mateer, and. And watching Rick Vive and uh, you know Sittler and Salming and and um, um, it just there was something about the way it looked, the way it felt, the old Maple Leaf Gardens, like it, it, the, it just everything about it appealed to me, and I, I I can't explain it except that you almost have to be Canadian to really understand it. I think to to really feel that that strange thing that you feel as a Canadian, when you see hockey or you hear that hockey night in Canada music, it takes me back. It takes me back to innocence and childhood and discovering this amazing thing that I've been a lifelong fan of ever since. Mm -hmm. And it resonated with me on so many levels. And it also brought me close to my uncles because we'd go out after and play street hockey. And they're way older than me and they are just drilling the ball at me and I don't care. I'm, I'm trying to make that glove safe. I'm getting beamed. I'm catching them in the armpits. Yeah. Like I, I remember having a bruise in my armpit for probably three weeks from stopping one of my uncle's slap shots and it hurt so bad, but I was so proud. <laughs> <laughs> no, you hang on. So you mentioned Maple Leaf Gardens there and Maple Leaf Gardens and Elliot's just like, this is a special building. Yeah. For, for people growing up in Toronto, and, and you're from Orangeville, and I'm sure you went to Maple Leaf Gardens plenty of times. But for me, Maple Leaf Gardens wasn't just hockey. It was also wrestling. Like, I used to go to see all those tiny shows when they ran with Mid-Atlantic. So the top three matches were all Mid-Atlantic matches. My very, you'll love this one. My first main event, I can remember, I went with my dad. 
remember getting, you know, walking up the stairs, coming off the, su- the subway and going into Maple Leaf Garden. The first main event that I ever saw was over the U.S., uh, Mid-Atlantic U.S. title. Yeah. Was Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat. And I remember leaving. I know, right? So I peaked early. So I remember leaving the, leaving the arena thinking that all wrestling was like that. <laughs> Little did I know, I, I probably had seen like one of the best in-ring fuse like, ever. So like, these guys brought, brought the house down, right? Like fantastic. Um, and I used to go see, you know, Sheik would run every month coming up from Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, Nat Tarov, the Tarovsky brothers who were photographers at Maple Leaf Gardens, both hockey and wrestling as well. So that's what it always meant to me. What do Maple Leaf Gardens mean to you? It, you know, here's what I loved about Maple Leaf Gardens is that it looked like no other arena. We, we had the ramp and that ramp. Oh, man. That, where is it? Do you know where it is? I have no idea. But that ramp made Maple Leaf Gardens like no other building. No other building looked like that. And here's what it did for me. So my first show uh, that I went to at Maple Leaf Gardens, the main event was Jesse the Body Ventura and Macho Man Randy Savage against Junkyard Dog and Tito Santana. Yeah. Also on that card was King Kong Bundy against Hillbilly Jim. When King Kong Bundy got up on that ramp, I had never seen a human being that big in my life. And my little brain exploded because human beings aren't made like that. Like you, you would see it on TV, but that's when the enormity of these guys really landed on me. And I went, Oh my God, this this is, these truly are superheroes come to life for me. Because, yeah, I can read about the Incredible Hulk and Thor and Daredevil a bit. I can't touch them. I can feasibly go smack hands with King Kong Bundy. What does that feel like? Mm-hmm. So that, that, that's when it, it, Maple Leaf Gardens, like the smell and, mm-hmm. and the popcorn. session stands and that one light over the ring. And so good. It's so good. It's so good. And I miss that element now. Everything is so polished and looks so professional. And I appreciate it's it. so bright. And I understand it. I do. But, man, give me that single light over the ring. Hall. Oh. You know what? You Hang on. You know what that does? Elliot and I have talked about this before when it comes to hockey. And you don't see this anymore because hockey's have just like the lights on the rink yeah. and everything else. Everything else was dark. And wrestling was like that, specifically at the gardens. And you know what you got that you don't have anymore in either sport? Because all these buildings have the audacity to be well lit now. You had shadows Mm -hmm. and the shadow game is gone either in wrestling or in hockey, in all sports, the shadow game has vanished. It's completely gone. You go back and you see a picture of, let's say, I don't know, Johnny Bauer and, and boom, boom, Jeffrey on's coming down on him. Right. It just, the, the look of that, like those are the pictures I grew up with. Those are the pictures that I grew up drawing and trying to, to get onto paper. And it, I, it, there's something special about that. And, and it really does. It just harkens back to childhood and all of those fond, amazing memories or trying to, to, to do that out on, on the, you know, the, the rink in the backyard or, just, you know, it just, um, it was special. It really was. And uh, I, I get that everything evolves. I understand that. And I think mm-hmm. every generation and every era pines for what they grew up on. I think that's normal. And I think you'll have a generation of kids now watching that will pine for today's product 20 years from now. Um, I think it's, that's the nature of it, but gosh, it looked to me, it looks so much cooler back then. <laughs> you know, I, I don't see why there's any reason you can't, cause it's still there. Now it's obviously not the same, but, you know, Ryerson plays their sports events in it. I wonder if you could make a small wrestling card at Maple Leaf Gardens and set it up the way it used to be set. I mean, I would be all in for that. that ramp. You need the, the key is the ramp, though. Adam's right. You need the ramp. You need the ramp. You, you, you know, the ramp. they have these things called tools, Jeff. You could build a new ramp. <laughs> If you build like it. if you can't un- find the un- old one, you could un- build a new one. Unfamiliar with this technology, this fancy technology of yours, Elliot. <laughs> what are these things you speak of? <laughs> yeah. You know, like I'm watching you now, and and the incredible recovery and return you have. I don't see why you couldn't say, you know, one last time, I'd like to recreate the old 
You know, we'd have to burn popcorn for a month beforehand <laughs> so you could smell like that. But And you don't exactly have the same seats, but you could create a small... With that lighting, I bet you you could do it. Get back in the old before barn. Before you're done. I, well, I'm, yeah. Hey, b- before it's all said and done, who knows? Maybe that could be a, a nice place for the last one, for the very, yeah. very last one. That, that would great. seem fitting. Like that would be, I'd be bawling all night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would. I, I have no shame. I, I will fully admit that. If I could wrestle a match in Maple Leaf Gardens, I would be a blubbering idiot. Oh man, it would be awesome. Yeah, oh, I, my great. my first one was Sergeant Slaughter Black Jack Mulligan for the US title. Wow. And I would love I would like I I'd, I'd be right in there with you and Jeff just watch it just it brings back so many great memories. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs>